Welcome to the continuation of our lecture on phylum arthropoda. So this presentation will focus on the important characteristics of the arthropods. This presentation will discuss about the important characteristics of the arthropods. It will also discuss about their morphology, the exoskeleton, their circulatory system, and the arthropods respiratory system. It is said that arthropods are successful in almost all habitats on Earth. They are considered to be one of the most abundant animals. Several million species of arthropods have been identified, and there are more species that are yet to be described. In terms of their development, the arthropods have a tripoblastic and protostome development. So when we say tripoblastic development, it means that they have uh, developed from the three primary germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. They also exhibit bilateral symmetry. So when we say bilateral symmetry, that is a symmetry in which similar anatomical parts are arranged on opposite sides of a median axis so that only one plane can divide the individual into essentially identical halves. There are four aspects of the arthropods that contribute to their success. One of that is metamerism. We also have the presence of the exoskeleton, the presence of the hemocele, and metamorphosis. Arthropods exhibit metamerism. So when we say metamerism, it is also known as segmentation or metameric segmentation. In zoology, it is defined as a condition of being constructed of a linear series of repeating parts, each being a metamere or a body segment. Metamerism is most evident externally. Each external segment of an arthropod bears a pair of appendages. The body cavity of an arthropod is not divided internally. Metamerism for arthropods permits the specialization of the regions of the body for specific functions. This is demonstrated in the phenomenon known as tagmatization. So when we say tagmatization, that is the regional specialization. It results in the formation of body regions or tagmata that are specialized for feeding, sensory perception, locomotion, and visceral functions. For the morphology of the arthropods, so the arthropods are metamerically segmented. The segments of the arthropods are associated in groups. The anterior segments form the head, the middle ones form the thorax, and the posterior ones forms the abdomen. The appendages on the body are paired. For the head, the arthropod, particularly the insects, have a paired antenna and paired appendages that are modified for feeding. The thorax contain the walking legs. The, the legs are jointed and each of the leg or the limb is made up of pieces called the podomeres. This diagram shows the insect leg and it contains uh, the podomeres. So when we say podomere, that is a leg segment of an arthropod. So this uh, insect leg contains the coxa, the trochanter, the femur, the tibia, the tarsus, and the claw. One of the most important uh, peculiar internal anatomy of the arthropod is exhibited in their body cavity. The general body cavity of the arthropod is a space filled with a blood called the hemocele. So when we say hemocele, now that is a primary body cavity, 
that contains the circulatory fluid of the arthropods as well as the mollusks. The fluid inside the hemocele is known as the hemocelic fluid or the hemolymph. When we are going to compare that with the selum, so selum is the major body cavity that bounds the GIT and various other body organs of the annelids to chordates. And the fluid inside the selum is known as the selumic fluid. So the hemocyl provides an internal cavity for the open circulatory system of the arthropods. It also allows for the exchange of nutrients, waste, and sometimes gases. A unique feature of animals in the arthropod phylum is the presence of a segmented body and fusion of sets of segments that give rise to functional body regions called the tagma. The tagma may be in the form of the head, the thorax, and the abdomen or a cephalothorax and abdomen, or a head and the trunk. The diagram shows the general arthropod body plan in the case of insects consisting of the three tagmata. The first is the head, which is shaded. We also have the thorax and the abdomen. An example of the tagmata or the tagmatization is the cephalization. When we say cephalization, that is defined as the concentration of a sensory tissues in the anterior part of the body, particularly the head. Arthropods typically have highly sophisticated heads possessing numerous appendages, sensory organs, their brain, and their mouth. The important characteristic of the arthropod is the presence of the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is the hard outer covering of the arthropod made of chitin. It covers the external surface of the body and it is also defined as an external jointed skeleton which encloses the arthropods. We also have the term for the chitinous plates constituting the hard surface of the insect or the arthropod, and this is known as the sclerite. The sclerites usually do not correspond to a particular anatomical areas. Sclerites in particular areas are given specific names. The dorsal sclerite is known as the tergum, while the ventral sclerite is known as the sternum. The lateral plate between the, ster the tergum and the sternum is called as the pleuron. The tergum, the sternum, and the pleuron of each segment are united by more flexible portions of exoskeleton which are termed as sutures. As arthropods grow, the exoskeleton will become too small for it, so it periodically casts off the exoskeleton and a new exoskeleton is formed. Casting off the exoskeleton is called as the ecdysis or molting. The diagram shows an adult cicada emerging from its 17-year nymph stage, molts and arises as a winged adult. This diagram shows the layers of the arthropod exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is composed of two layers. The first layer is the epicuticle and the second layer is the procuticle. The epicuticle is considered to be the outermost waxy lipoprotein layer and the procuticle which is composed of the exocuticle and the endocuticle is the bulky inner layer that is made up of chitin. The exoskeleton is lined by wax layer, which serve as a waterproofing to protect the arthropods from desiccation. 
The wax layer is covered by a cement layer as shown in the diagram whose function is to protect the vital wax layer. For the functions of the exoskeleton, so these are the important functions of the arthropod exoskeleton. So it is a protection to the internal organs. It also serves as the first line of defense against extrinsic injuries. It also limits the membrane or the skin. It is also important for the attachment of muscles. It gives rigidity to the body and it waterproofs the insect. Arthropods are cellumates with a true cellum or body cavity. However, in arthropods, the cellum is reduced to a small compartment. The internal space of the arthropod is composed of a body cavity known as the hemocyl. The hemocyl is filled with blood called the hemolymph. So the diagram shows the, uh, the location of the hemocyl in the internal structure of the arthropod's uh, body. The, it is said that the hemocyl contains the hemolymph. The hemolymph is defined as the fluid, which is analogous to the blood in vertebrates that circulates in the interior of the arthropod's body. So that is why, you know, in some references, the hemolymph is also known as the arthropod's blood. For the circulatory system of the arthropods, so the circulatory system is effectively a network of cylindrical vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries that emanate from a pump known as the heart. In all vertebrate organisms, as well as some invertebrates, this is closed system in which the blood is not free in a cavity. In a closed circulatory system, the blood is contained inside the blood vessel and circulates unidirectionally from the heart around the systemic circulatory route, then returns to the heart again, as illustrated in this figure, in this uh, figure 1a. As opposed to a closed system, arthropods, including the insects and crustaceans, have an open circulatory system, as illustrated in Figure 1b. In an open circulatory system, the blood is not enclosed in the blood vessel, but is pumped into a cavity called as the hemocyl and is called the hemolymph because the blood mixes with the interstitial fluid. So as the heart beats and the animal moves, the hemolymph circulates. The hemolymph uh, circulates around the organs within the body cavity and then re-enters re the heart through openings called the ostia. This movement allows for gas and nutrient exchange. An open circulatory system does not use as much energy as a closed circulatory system to operate or to maintain. However, there is a trade-off with the amount of blood that can be moved to metabolically active organs and tissues that require high levels of oxygen. In fact, one reason that insects with wingspans of up to two feet wide are not around today is probably because they were out, out competed by the arrival of birds 150 million years ago. Birds having a closed circulatory system are thought to have moved more agilely, allowing them to get food faster and possibly to prey on the insects. For the respiratory system, we know that arthropod is the largest phylum with the highest number of species and the numbers of individuals are also high. 
So arthropods have various types of respiratory systems as indicated in this slide. So among the uh, respiratory system of the arthropods are, you have the tracheal system, the book lungs, the blood gills, and the gills. So one of the means by which the arthropods breathe is by way of the tracheal system. And this is exhibited by most of the insects. So insects mainly breathe by the tracheal system consisting of the elastic air tubes called the trachea. As illustrated in this uh, diagram. The trachea is distributed all over the body like the circulatory system of the vertebrates. Hence, the air is in direct contact with the cells in tissue of the body. It means that the tracheal system serves for the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide, so there is no respiratory function of the blood. So insects cannot have the capacity to conduct oxygen by pigments or have a poor capacity for oxygen transport. The tracheal system consists of the following parts. So we have the spiracles. Instead of the nostrils, the insect breathes through the openings in the thorax and the abdomen called the spiracles, as illustrated in this figure. We also have the tracheoles. So the tracheoles are the branches of the trachea. And we also have the air sacs. They serve to increase the respiratory efficiency by providing a large surface area for gas exchange. Another means by which uh, arthropods breathe is through the skin. So the, through the skin, in areas where exoskeleton remain thin and permeable, gas exchange can occur. And this is exhibited by the parasitic mites. For the summary of the air breathing organs of most of the arthropods, so this include the lung books for scorpions, spiders, and crabs. We also have the trachea for ticks and most of insects. For the larvae of the hyperderma fly, we have the trachea lungs, and we also have the tracheal system, air sacs for the fly. Lucilia. The diagram shows the book lungs as well as the tracheal system. 